Can you believe that at one time, some housewife or grandma or whatever was sitting around and was like, hey, I know what'll be good. Let's dump simple syrup onto crackers in a pie crust and bake it. It'll taste just like apple. Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. I hope that you're doing great today. Um, okay, so we are going to be making a mock apple pie. Okay, first things first, let's get our pie crust started, okay? So we are going to add two and a half cups of flour into our bowl. You don't want to do this with a stand mixer. When you overwork your flour, it creates the it activates the gluten in there, right? Okay, so what that's going to do is that is going to create a tough pie crust. And it also is going to incorporate your fats too much into it. And what you want is you want layers of fat and flour. That's really what produces a nice flaky crust, okay? And I don't have a pastry cutter. I've never really loved them that much, but this little tiny potato masher came with the boys radish kids box for homeschool and I love it for making pie crusts it, and biscuits. It works great. It breaks up the flour without touching it. The heat from your hands will actually melt your butter and your shortening and uh, and that will also, doing it with your hands, that's why pastry cutters were invented because your hands are too warm and it will melt, start melting the fat. So you'd really want to use something, even if you just use a fork, okay? So the we're going to add in one teaspoon of salt to our two and a half cups of flour. And two tablespoons of sugar. Mind that around a little bit. Okay, so now we are going to add in our butter, our chilled butter. Make sure that it's cold, straight out of the fridge, guys, okay? And cut it into little bricks. Handling it as little as possible. You just don't, if you dump it all into a clump, then it'll be harder to uh, get it coated in flour. And then just start mashing and we're gonna add the shortening in little drops half a cup of shortening and uh, three quarters cup of butter okay you guys now that we have our flour or now that we have our fat cut into our flour some of the pieces are still a little bit bigger we're gonna start adding our water we have half a cup of ice water here And we're going to add in just a little bit at a time. You don't want to work your hands in there too much, but you are going to have to, um, towards the end to get it to come together, you are going to have to use your hands to knead it a little bit. Okay, guys, now that that is done, we are going to shape our pie crust into a disc and we are going to wrap it in saran wrap and let it sit in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Okay, so we are going to get the syrup for our pie filling going while we roll the pie crust out, okay? So first thing, we're gonna put two cups of sugar into our sauce pot, and we are going to put two teaspoons of cream of tartar, and one and three quarter cups of water. We're gonna mix that up a little bit. This recipe is so easy, you guys. And we're going to get it on the stove, we're going to bring it up to a rolling boil, and then we're going to turn it down and simmer it for 15 minutes. Okay guys, it is time to roll out our pie crust. Our syrup is simmering on the stove. And start by putting a little bit of flour down on your surface, on your rolling surface. All right, so we are going to get our pie crust rolled out here. And we've had it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. So it's not too hard yet. 
Um, it's nice and easy to roll out still. You don't want to add too much flour to it, to it because that will, again, make it tougher. Alrighty, once your pie crust is about a quarter of an inch thick, you can transfer it into your pie pan. This pie only has a single crust. It does not have a top crust on it. You're gonna cut around the edge. I might actually save this leftover pie crust. Waste not, right? We're talking about budget meals here and make a lattice for the top of the pie. You don't want to you, you want to over roll your pie crust. So don't like squish it back together into a ball. Um, just keep it to, like work with it, right? So I have my little um, pie, cut, my little pastry wheel cutter here, but you can use a pizza cutter, it works just as good. If you choose to even do a top crust. If you don't, it doesn't matter at all. I'm only doing these for the little look. I want you guys, when you're baking, to think on your feet, okay? So don't be like a slave to your recipe. Um, I want you to, it, you, you don't have to abide by everything the recipe says, okay? Like, like I just did. This recipe doesn't call for a top crust, but I had extra pie crust and I want to make a lattice on the top. So I'm gonna take the extra and I'm going to put it in the fridge until I'm ready. I'm actually gonna put this in the fridge too, but I'm going to put these strips in the fridge until we fill the pie and then I'm just gonna throw them on there. So I really want you, you guys to keep an open mind when you are cooking, especially budget cooking, because um, first of all, don't let anything go to waste. And second, um, you can make something amazing that you didn't even plan to do, right? Okay, so uh, we will be back when we are ready to fill this pie. Okay, you guys, so our syrup simmered for 15 minutes and then we let it sit for 30 minutes to cool down a little bit. Um, now we are going to add in two tablespoons of lemon juice and a teaspoon of cinnamon. You don't want to add in flavorings to syrups while they're boiling. It can change the flavor and it can also break down the flavor. So something that would taste really good doesn't taste so good after um, boiling it at a really high, boiling it at a really high temperature because you have to remember sugar, um, sugar can get up to 300 degrees plus. It is not the same as water. We are going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees. Now you guys have to remember, so this recipe came about in the Great Depression because of lack of ability to get fruit, right? So not only did we have um, the stock market crash, but we also had um, we also had the Dust Bowl at the same time, which lost a lot of uh, a lot of our agriculture. So recipes like these, you might go, why would you not just buy some apples? Well, they couldn't buy apples. And so you have to think about stuff like this in the current times, if it comes to the point of not being able to get something, uh, like I was saying earlier, don't you don't have to stick to your recipe, okay? Like branch out a little bit. Um, can you believe that at one time, some housewife or grandma or whatever was sitting around and was like, hey, I know what'll be good. Let's dump simple syrup onto crackers in a pie crust and bake it. It'll taste just like apple pie, right? Somebody said that at one point. So just just remember, I, I want you guys to always think outside the box because there's so much out there that you can come up with, with little ingredients. All right, so the recipe calls for 36 crackers and one sleeve has 31 crackers in it. Um, Ritz actually came out in, I believe, 1930 or either 1930 or 1935. I'll pop it up. And 
right after it came out, the recipe for uh, mock apple pie was on was put onto the box. Um, now, before Ritz Cracker debuted, they had other um, they had other crackers. They would use soda crackers, um, some butter crackers, but mostly it was just soda crackers, and that's what they used. So we're gonna take these and we're gonna roughly break them. So this is a deep dish pie pan. Um, so I think that that's probably why I'm about half filled here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the lattice on it and then I'm going to fold over the edges so that it kind of like, so that it folds in on itself. All right, so now we're gonna put the butter, sprinkle the butter around it. to pour our simple syrup over top of our crackers. Okay, so I'm gonna egg wash around the edges just to get the, um, my, just to get my lattice to stick. Normally I would egg wash after, but since I'm doing a lattice on here, so you only stick down one side when you're going to do a lattice, okay?
Alrighty, you guys, we're gonna throw a quick egg wash over the top of this. I'm guessing that it's probably not going to need it because I think that this syrup is going to bubble up a bit. Um, I'm going to put a pan underneath, um, I'm going to put a pan underneath this pie in my oven. It, it might have enough room with how much space there is above it, but just in case, I do not want to be cleaning up sugar off the bottom of my oven. And oh, so th since we're talking about it, um, eggs, if it gets to the point where it's too hard for you guys to find eggs, um, or if they really end up being a dollar each, like they're saying that they might by fall, then what you can use to top your pie is you can melt butter, you can use a little bit of milk, and you can just use water. If it, if, if it is, uh, you know, just to stick it together, you can just brush a little bit of water on there, it works great. Oh, perfect timing. All right, so let's get this pie in the oven. We are going to be baking it at 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes until the top is golden brown. Okay, you guys. Watch out, Colton. Okay, guys, it has been 30 minutes and the pie is beautiful. I mean, <laughs> it's crazy, but this actually does look like an apple pie. Um, so it does say that this is best served warm. So what we are going to do is let it cool. And then tonight when Justin gets home, we will do a tasting with him and the boys and see what their honest opinion is of it. All right, I hope that you guys um, cook something from your stockpile today, if not put something in your stockpile today. And I hope that you, along with the rest of us, can beat this inflation. All right, have a blessed day. Bye. Hi guys. We are trying our mom's mock apple pie made out of Ritz crackers. Ritz crackers. Um, so we're gonna try it. See how it tastes. It looks weird. I'm gonna see if it tastes like apple. <laughs> That's the whole point. But that kind of weird. Hmm. It does it. It does it's in weird. a way taste like yeah. apple, but um. So I when, tried it, and um, I I think that it tastes almost exactly like apple pie. Um, it's a little runnier, but and a little sweeter, but just a tad bit. Um, but it tastes mm. almost identical yeah. to apple pie. What? Okay, Colt, what do you think? Is it good? Uh, it's not like an apple where it's like chewy. Um, it's more of like when you bite it, it ta it's like the consistency of an apple. But then once you start chewing, it's like... Um, it feels like a uh, freeze-dried apple. Like, it's weird. Don't bite your shirt. And it, it, the dough, the it dough like tastes good. The dough tastes like apple pie dough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well, it is apple pie dough. Um, but yeah, it's, it like, it, it like, if you look at it, it like, looks like apple. When it's in the pie pan, it looks like an apple pie. The only way that you can notice is like the little spikes on the side of the rings. That's the only way that you can notice that it's a, not an apple pie, a yeah. fake apple Yeah, so it's, I like the texture. It tastes exactly like apple pie. Um, well, that part, it's got the right flavor. Um, so it's pretty good. I'll give it a nine out of 10. It's good. Say what you um, like better, William, apple or that? Uh, well, I... <laughs> Stop it, let me talk. Um, but I, it's like, it tastes exactly...
exactly like apple pie, so you can barely like tell the difference. So I would give it a ten out of ten. Colton, what do you think? From one out of ten, what would you rate it? Doggy. <laughs> Doggy. <laughs> Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I really hope you try this out and taste it for yourselves. Maybe leave it in the comments and pictures. Um, please like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Bye! Bye.